Red Ray Gun Limited presents The Benji and Nick Show Hello Good morning Good afternoon Good day Good evening Goodness Yes, I got to say it's excellent <laughs> Loch Ness Welcome Yes where are we, Nick? What are we, rather? What are oh, we? Who are we? Who on earth are we? Uh, it's the Benji and Nick show, and we talk about cult TV. We start off close to the microphone. We certainly And then we do. get a bit tired of that, and we just move away and start talking really oh, loudly. Oh, there we go. Yes, back to the normal volume. All is normal here at Benji and Nick HQ. Our topic of the week is The Tomorrow People, The Slaves of Jedekiah, Part 1. Do you remember The Tomorrow People, 1973, I want to say? Well, it is indeed. Thames Television, ITV, uh, created as a sort of ITV rival to Doctor Who. That's very much how it was billed at the time, which, don't laugh too much. Yeah, <laughs> just going to say. <laughs> yes, it's, it's very... With no budget whatsoever. It's very interesting, and I have a lot to say uh, from that fun experience <laughs> of watching it. Good. Well, we'll be coming on to the Tomorrow People very soon. We'll be approaching it with hammers. Um, uh, also, if you want to email us with suggestions of what we should discuss, or just to say stuff, uh, or to remonstrate with us. I just wanted to say remonstrate. That's a great word, isn't it? Thank remonstrate. You. Remonstrate. It also sounds it sounds a bit like Scooby-Doo trying to say demonstrate, doesn't it? <laughs> remonstrate. <laughs> Very good. Uh, yes, you can send your emails to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com. Marvellous. And also, yeah, and also we'll be giving the result of our competition for the Eric Myval, Myval book, Cutting Edge, My Life in Film and Television. Eric was uh, became a personal friend of Patrick McGowan, the prisoner. And um, plus there'll be a new competition. Oh. Yeah. And then, just to surprise ourselves, we will spontaneously choose the next topic of discussion for next week's podcast. I have no ideas in my head. No, I've well, I've got a sort of idea, but it's oh. but it's an it's an idea, it's an idea of how to get an idea. If that makes sense, you see. Well, yeah. it sort of does. Yes, it, in my little mad mind, anyway, it does. Let's start with the emails. Do you want to read this first one? I Benji? would certainly love to uh, read this first email out. Uh, so remember, as Nick previously said, if you want to email in, it's podcast at nicholasbriggs.com. So the first one here is The Box of Delights. Uh, oh. The date for this one is the 13th of the 9th, 2018, sent oh. at 1739. And this one is oh. from Jenny Shirt. Lovely Jenny. Hello, Jenny. Um, Hello. She's all active all over Twitter and has a constant stream of happiness and positivity, which is she's great. Which is yes. what we like to see because the world doesn't have enough positive positiveness positive positivity and happiness um yeah so here we go reading the email here it says hi nick and benji i was wondering if you might do a podcast on the box of delights near a christmas i wrote an article on it for for we are cult a few years back I was 13 in 1984 when I was first captivated by the magic of John Macefield's wonderful story. Every year since its much-awaited release on DVD, it has become a custom in our house, as in many others, to watch an episode a week right up to Christmas week itself. The whole feel of the bright, colourful characters completely awakens your imagination. I love how it all starts. Kay Harker, a young schoolboy going home for the holidays, gets pickpocketed, loses his train ticket, and then meets Cole Hawlings, a Punch and Judy man with a magical box. But all isn't as it seems. The wolves are running, evil is waiting, and with the box in his safe keeping. It's a wonderful story, and Patrick Troughton was perfect in the role of the mysterious Punch and Judy man. I still love the interview with the cast that was shown in Blue Peter 2. Thanks, and I hope you're both well and happy too, Jenny Shirt. Oh, that's lovely. Well, Thank you very thanks, much Jenny. for that one. What a great suggestion. Um, I yeah, for Christmas time, we should, shouldn't we? Definitely. I mean, I watched it last Christmas anyway, actually. Did you? Yeah. I don't know whether or not I've ever seen it. I remember it being on. I remember seeing some of it. But whether I actually watched it all, I'm not sure. It is It is very good. It's very Christmassy. And um, it's Patrick Charleston is just... Yeah absolutely yeah. on the money in this one he's just perfect it's it's good it's a good watch very good watch 
Uh, before I go on to the next email, I did invite some Facebook comments on my official Facebook page. I also did on the Benji and uh, Nick show uh, Facebook page, but only two comments on there. So, guys, get over there. Get, get on over it. to the Benji. Yeah. But, um, it's, uh, you know, listeners of this podcast have a long term relationship with my official Facebook page. Uh, I just uh, dip in and out, if you'll forgive me for not reading everything out, folks. Uh, Melvin Pena says, I love the Becky and Ninja show, <laughs> an essential part of my Sunday routine. My personal favourite bit is the weekly ramble with Jamie Anderson. Oh, I see. You're, you're calling our show the Be Becky and Ninja show. I didn't get that. I was <laughs> thinking, what is this? Some American show I've never heard of. <laughs> okay, well, uh, Melvin, I promise you a bit of Jamie Anderson. He's, uh, I don't know which bit, probably his left shoulder. Uh, Aaron J. Clymer says, hello, says, oddly enough, I've only ever heard the Big Finish Tomorrow People audios and never seen any of the TV episodes before. Yeah, we used to do audios for them they were great fun i was in them i played um i played a villain in one of them uh, wow. joe shelby says here in the states it was uh shown in the early 80s on a kids cable network called nickelodeon which we've heard of of course famous, definitely famous. love it nick usually paired up with an anthology set called the third eye oh i don't know what that is uh, michael gibbons said just completed a full viewing of the box set the site of the galactic federation council members in the final story will stay with me forever uh, fun show i remember as a kid yeah uh, you you didn't see that presumably no no, no I, they were sort of like awful ridiculous puppets and things about as believable as as this thing i'm doing now <laughs> I, I i didn't get very far into the tomorrow people when i tried to properly sit down and watch it but i'll explain it all in our chat um well, any other let me ooh, uh, Oh, I thought it was fantastic that they got Nicholas Young to appear in the recent US version. Yeah, Nicholas Young, who played John, he went over there and uh, visited and did that. I saw the US version, and to me, it just it seemed generic. It seemed like any other, uh, you know, it didn't seem specifically like the Tomorrow People. Yeah, okay. I mean, it's, that's the thing. A lot of these things, you never quite know. You never quite know if how it's going to go, and some things are fueled by nostalgia, and sometimes they try to break it away and do something completely different, don't they? Yeah, I like the nostalgia. Actually, David Steele says that Tomorrow People has the best theme music ever. Discuss. We certainly will discuss that. Love the Tomorrow People. One of those shows that interested me scientifically. Also love the Big Finish audios. Uh, only have vague recollections, says Mark Bosley. That was James Brandt, by the way, previously. Uh, in case I sound a bit nonplussed, folks, it's because Benji and I have just had the most appalling internet and FaceTime. We have. Problems. It's all gone so we're, we're crazy. We're shell-shocked. It all happened in the blink of an edit for you guys at home. But for us, it, it seemed to go on for It's very real for Minutes. us. Uh, anyway, yeah, so there's a selection of lovely uh, uh, Facebook comments. And Melvin Pena says, also, fun aside, the Scottish band Camera Obscura put out a video in 2013 for their song Troublemaker, which is a visual tribute to so many of the cult sci-fi shows we love, including The Tomorrow People, Doctor Who, Blake Seven, and so on. Well, we must watch that. Camera Obscura, Troublemaker, official video on YouTube.com. Go and have a look at that, folks. I look forward to watching that after this here podcast. So the next email is, uh, the subject was podcast suggestion. And it was uh, sent on the 12th of September at 13.07 by Jamie Hailstone to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com. Hi, Benji and Nick. Greetings from the outer wastelands of West Sussex. Wessex. Wessex. <laughs> That's not Wessex. It's West Sussex. Oh, oh. Wessex is like Dorset and, you know. Oh, well. It's, 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 it's ruined yeah. ruin me now. <laughs> oh, well. Move on, anyway. It's always good to hear your podcasts. Oh, thank you very much. Literally always. Never <laughs> stop listening. Can I suggest the 1979 Star Wars rip-off Star Crash? Ooh. Benji's looking. It's, I vaguely remember something about it. It's got everything a sci-fi fan could wish for. Comedy robots, Caroline Munro. Oh, lovely Caroline Munro. And a pre night rider, David Hasselhoff himself. <laughs> I added that himself bit. I don't know why. Uh, the special effects are beyond shoddy. And the script makes no sense, comma, whatsoever. <laughs> It therefore falls into perfect post-pub viewing category. Yes. Anyway, keep it, up the good work, Jamie. Thank you for that, Jamie. 
What do you reckon, Benji? You're just looking just it. looking through the uh, the trailer for it, it very much is woman in very little clothes running around <laughs> on a space station with lots of special effects and model work, isn't it? And I bet their lightsaber equivalents are called laser swords um, <laughs> or something. I mean, it looks it does look quite fun. Um, I'm uh, going to be honest. It, it looks like some. Uh, it looks. This is really crude, but it looks like some sort of ghastly. Uh, pornography spin-off version of Star Star Wars. It's truly, yeah, ghastly. sounding that way, isn't it? Although Caroline Munro would never be involved. No, in no, like quite, quite, no, quite, quite, quite. No, 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 no. Right on to the next email. We'll we'll take that one under consideration, uh, Mr. Hailstone. Okay, so our next one here is a note. Where the subject's a note. Note from Tom Hodden to your Facebook page, the Benji and Nick. Uh, show cult tv podcast date 11 9 2018 uh, time 1856 good year um from thomas hodden uh, to podcast at nicholasbriggs.com evening gents uh, in a shameless evening. attempt that sounded like your sylvester mccoy evening that was when he was with that that new companion um uh, georgia evening <laughs> evening money money <laughs> ace money Oh, so good. <laughs> Evening, gents. Uh, in a shameless attempt to try and blag myself the signed photo of Nick, brackets, but let's be honest, you won't want to read this out. And frankly, if this is your best email of the week, <laughs> it would have to be a slow week. Um, <laughs> not, I, at all. not at all. Not at all. I've been trying to think of ways that Red Raygun can grow their presence. Mm-hmm. Not for your distinguished brand, uh, the cheap merch or tie-in albums. Instead, I suggest the following. The Benji and Nick Satnav. That, li- <laughs> that livens up long journeys with interesting tangents, <laughs> random spluttering of cat weasel, may have turned right, uh, <laughs> and uh, randomly choosing your next destination at the end of the route. So I rather like Brilliant. that. Yeah, it's a lovely pub down the road, actually. You might, you might not want to go that way instead. But we were, we were visiting your mother. <laughs> uh, we've got here genuine stone taps. That are far more decorative than common <laughs> garden plastic cassettes. Well, yeah, I mean, perfect. You know, what, that's, what more do you want? And um, we've got here Jamie a vision uh, that replaces you in any video call with the top of Nick's head. <laughs> Remarkable. Uh, and the alternative soundtrack Dalek album that replaces the music of the Dalek films with the enthusiastic vocal <laughs> renditions featured in the podcast. What you mean? Here we go. Come on, Nick, you've got to do the voice. Exterminate! Ah! Ah! Oh, the stuntman broke his ankle doing that. He certainly did. Thank you, T.E. Hodden. Yes, and also uh, thank you to um, Allsop Spray Duster that safely removes dust and debris. Um, oh, lovely. Who aren't sponsoring us, but did provide well, all that those Dalek are brilliant gust. ideas, Thomas. Thank you, Tom. See, the reason Tom's uh, emails come with note from Tom Hodden, blah, 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 because that is the automatic title generated by Facebook if you press the email us uh, button on Facebook. I like see. it. Yeah, so. Uh, I'm not a big Facebook free, user. I don't know how these. Well, yeah. I do know how Facebook works, but I don't, <laughs> I don't use it an awful lot. I'm, I'm more of a Twitter man myself, or a Twitman. A Twitman. <laughs> Yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know where that was going. Uh, now, here's a subject I never thought I'd read out. <laughs> subject, Hitler. <laughs> oh, well. well that was uh, interesting. Very sensitive. Uh, a date the 9th of uh, the 9th, 2018, at 21.43, from Alfie Shaw, who's a producer hey. of uh, the Big Finish Short Trips. Centre podcast at Big Finish. Talk. No, sorry. Centre podcast at nicholasbriggs.com. It's the it's in the last crusade exclamation mark. <laughs> Hitler signs Sean Connery's diary. Honestly, buck up, lads. Hello and goodbye. <laughs> Alfie, sent from my denial that Indiana Jones 4 exists, even though I've seen it three times. <laughs> There's so many references going on there. We just I don't know why why were we talking about Hitler in the Indiana Jones oh, movie? I don't know. We are just always going on about the war, aren't we? We're, we're, the like war. A, we're like a broken record we are. <laughs> I'm saying this like I didn't sit last night and Michael Sheard. Uh, Michael Sh- oh my Michael Sheard, yes. The That's why we late, mentioned great it. Great Michael Sheard. Yeah, of course we did. Yeah, no, I remember this conversation now. Well, there we go. You know, we've got the facts right in front of us there. 
So that's and also the denial that Indiana Jones Four exists. I've like, not seen that, it. It's like like the Mandela effect. I've not seen it. You know, there are certain things that that have to be left in the past, and uh, it's the same. It's the same with Rambo. I love those Rambo films. You know, they're they're pretty pretty rubbish, really, but I like them. And then when I saw that Stallone uh, did a new Rambo, um, I was like, nah, no thanks. Same with Rocky. Just don't, just don't. These these rehashings just don't don't do it for me indiana jones was it the crystal skull i think it's called doesn't he lock himself in a fridge to avoid a nuclear blast yeah 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 well we, yeah, but we, he's also he hangs onto the edge uh, the side of a submarine while it submerges and is apparently still alive when it gets to the end of its oh. journey in the first movie so well, well we've all done that haven't we <laughs> <laughs> i think personally i think there's more chance of surviving in a fridge during a nuclear blast than there is of hanging onto a submarine <laughs> while it's submerged Yes, yeah, so we're travelling across the entire Pacific Ocean or whatever it was doing, or Atlantic. Who knows which ocean? It was an ocean, let's face it. One of those. No one can hold their breath that long. Um, I, d- I think people misunderstood Indiana Jones for being a realistic adventure series. It was meant to be over the top. And Indiana Jones, the fourth one, honestly, mate, give it a go. It's got John Hurt in it. Yeah, I mean, that is a symbol of it's going to be good if John Hurt's in it. It's great fun. But... It really is great fun. And people just panned it because... You know, sometimes people are tired of an idea and, and sometimes it's brought back at the wrong time and they go, no, I'm not having that. But honestly, there is nothing intrinsically wrong with it at all. It's very faithful to the originals. And um, Harrison Ford, of course, does a tremendous job. Oh, he's, he, I mean, he's always going to be good, isn't he? He's, he is brilliant. And <coughs> likewise, the Star Wars films, you know, he's great in those. That's the thing. I well, exactly. I, I won't be an old stick in the mud, Nick. <laughs> Look, it's time to phone Jamie. Oh, great. I'm phoning Jamie Anderson, son of Jerry Anderson, to see whether he's ready to talk to us. He's connecting. Hello. 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 <laughs> hello, hello, hello. That's a very strange look you're giving me. That's just my face, you horrible man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, that's what you look like, isn't it? I was uh, expecting to speak to... Brad Pitt or something. <laughs> Sorely disappointed, aren't you? How are you? I'm I'm good. Yeah, are you okay? Yeah, no, not bad. Yeah, I'm very good, thanks. Benji says he's not bad too. I, I didn't ask. <laughs> <laughs> there he is. No, no, there he is. Obviously, Benji, I went meant you plural. So. Oh well, I, I should jolly well hope so. You're looking. You're looking well. Thank you, Benji. That's very kind. Are we all being nice to each other today? No, it's not going to last. I uh, listen. Nah. Um, I think what everyone wants to know about is any more information about Little Chef. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anybody wants to know that. Um, I haven't been yet because I haven't got time. To the one but, in the middle of Wales, yeah. Yeah, but I think two Saturdays' time, mm. I'm doing a journey past it, and if I don't manage it that day, then I'm going to drive to um, Big Finish Day and go via that excellent even though it's slightly out of the way so i'm going to go and i will take photographs and video evidence (laughs) right we want that because we definitely without question personally i think you've imagined it (laughs) or you've had some kind of weird sapphire and steel you know time distortion moment it's possible because I love it so much i'm distorting space time around me to take me back to 1979 I'm, I was reminded of uh, Little Chef because I believe the Olympic breakfast <laughs> <laughs> has has chips with it. Um, it's sauté potatoes. Mm. Oh, blimey. So chips in a different uh, shape. Well, disky chips yeah. rather than chippy chips. Yeah. Well, it's just that Steph and I were trying to find a, a restaurant to have lunch in yesterday. And, and for various reasons, we were let down. So we eventually went to a lovely cafe called the Blue Moon Cafe. and uh, What is it with you and the th- Blue Moon, Nick? But I'll, I'll <laughs> well, why is the Blue Moon? Benji's asked me what it is about me and the Blue Moon. You're always saying, like, you, you, whenever we're with places, you always seem to have a, have a Blue Moon. There's always something called a Blue Moon. That's true. Benji's saying there's always something called a Blue Moon. There's a, there's a beer in America called Blue Moon, isn't there? There is. I, yeah. I, I drank some last time I was there, I think. Yeah. They tend to put a huge slice of... Um, orange in it don't they yes yeah. you're exactly right 
They don't do that in this country for fear of starting a fight in a pub. Where, where does Blue Moon come from? <laughs> Once in a blue moon, blue moon. Anyway, look, we had a big, but we decided to go for the English breakfasts. Steph had a vegetarian one because she's a vegetarian. And then she said, oh, and can we have a portion of chips too? <gasps> Good Lord. She's a healthy eater and she suddenly goes for a whacking great bowl of chips. So so it was a bit like an Olympic breakfast. I could really go for a whacking great bowl of chips right now. Have you not had lunch? Che- cheesy chips. No, cheesy I chips. I've had anything. I've just been on the coffee. Can you oh. tell? Yeah, you are a bit yeah, wired. Um, <laughs> ben- Benji just said cheesy chips. Yeah, cheesy chips also very good. Um, yeah. I can't do cheese anymore. I do love oh, cheesy chips. Don't worry, I'll eat the cheese you can't. Oh, thanks. You'll scrape it off my chips for me. <laughs> yeah, it won't damage the dairy farmer's um, economy. Okay. Uh, any uh, relevant news from the exciting world of Jamie Anderson and and his late father, TV's Jerry Anderson? <laughs> Shaking his head. Uh, well, I mean, there, there's sad news. Do we want to talk sad news? Go on, well, why not? We're grown-ups here. Well, I saw this morning that um, Senior Mertens died. Oh, what was oh. she known for? She was Sandra in Space 1999, but she was also uh, Marco Polo. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So that's rather sad. She was and, in Marco um, Polo, wasn't she? We yeah. think yeah. she died yesterday, which was which was the 13th of September, which is obviously Breakaway Day. Oh, so. yeah. The, the, yes, the day that um, the moon was meant to have zoomed off. Oh. Exactly. How so, old was she? Do you know what? I don't know. Isn't that terrible? Oh, we're very sad about that. Yeah, yeah that's it's very a sad. Great shame, she it? did that Space 1999 sort of um, revisited kind of video, didn't she, where she played her character? Yes. The message from Moonbase Alpha, yeah. yeah. Um, she was only 72. Oh, that's sad. Well, yeah. Very sad. So sorry to bring you sad news, but, you know, it's, it's relevant, isn't it? Yes, yes. Well, and, and she was part of two great franchises, so very sorry to see her go. Absolutely. Um, I don't think I've got any... any you, can't, you can't really come back from that. Only the expertise of a, a BBC breakfast presenter can get you back from that. You know, when they're larking around over a cup of coffee and then suddenly they have to tell you that several thousand people have died, you know. Yeah. And they do that sort of strange look at the camera that kind of... I can only liken it to uh, someone having some kind of bowel problem. And then, and then their expression changes. They go, "Today, it, you know." So we can't do that. We're not that. No, but then at the end of the sad story, they leave a kind of second and a half pause, and then go, "Now," and then it all <laughs> yeah. brightens up again. Yeah. So, <laughs> can we try that? Okay. Now, um, right, uh, I'll, I'll, we've got to discuss the tomorrow people now. I've never seen it. Really? No. Shall I watch it? No. <laughs> well, listen to our analysis of it in the podcast, then you decide. Then I, yeah, okay. Decision probably made, but I won't say <laughs> I love it, but you know, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, enjoy. Thanks for having me again. It's been a pleasure. I'll speak to you later. Thanks for being here. I look forward to it. In an untransmittable version. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Bye. Right. Always a pleasure. Uh, okay, on to the tomorrow people, the slaves of Jedekiah. Benji, hit me. <laughs> uh, well, have we, have we explained what tomorrow people is, first of all? Should we do that before Would you we... like to explain in Carol's voice? <laughs> <laughs> I would not like to. <laughs> she's one of the tomorrow people. Oh, well, she's, she's, she's so, like that. so patronising. Oh, I can't, you know, I can't stand Carol with, with a passion. I loathe her with a passion worse than redemption. Um... It's the Tomorrow People for, are basically Homo oh, superiors. Uh, they are people which uh, have powers beyond the uh, ability of normal human beings. And uh, interestingly enough, they're all kids. Um, well, they are the next development of the human race. And the idea is that children are, are starting to break out and become these Tomorrow People. So uh, the, the, the next development and the next generation of, of human beings. So that's why they're all children. It's, I mean, it's I, an interesting one, I have to say. It's for, for my opinion of it straight away is that 
it's um look look at us here at thames television um, we can do lots of special effects with these fun, fun csu yes yeah, cso chroma key uh bits and bobs from the weather department um <laughs> but the problem is that a they, they don't really know what they're doing in terms of how like, a lot of it is really quite poor and number two um they see obviously it's for children but it's just dreadful i have to be honest it's just dreadful it's just it's just and it is for kids and so I, I let it off you know let them off a little bit but there's not a lot about it that isn't fairly appalling <laughs> i think the central concept is a fun and interesting one and oh, I, definitely. there's lots of talk about how roger price who created the idea um uh, it, it was very much a metaphor for puberty and for awakening sexuality um the the whole thing about breaking out and being confused about your identity and gaining a new identity, gaining a more grown-up, responsible identity. So, you know, I think I think there's a great central idea to it, which um, the remake, the American remake that was recently done, which I think died after one series, uh, it's completely missed that. But then I didn't watch it enough to really judge it. I just watched it for about 15 minutes and thought, oh, this is horrible it it needs the netflix treatment that's what it needs it needs a bit a bit of the netflix or a bit of amazon prime injected into it to give it that oomph um (coughs) maybe so and oomph is what this sort of lacks for me unfortunately um it's it's just that dread dreadful a lot of dreadful acting going on (laughs) throughout (laughs) well let me just say this as as i was a child when this was on i was you know it was on at the same time as i don't know around about the time of you know planet of the daleks that sort of 1973 doctor who series um and um it was very much billed as i mentioned earlier as itv's um version of doctor who and so they went and got dudley simpson who did all the doctor who which is but this um, is my favorite bit by the way yeah, that they is got him the to music. do the theme tune and they also got members of the Radiophonic Workshop to work under pseudonyms and, uh, you know, uh, on the quiet to do various electronic weird noises that they would use as incidental music as well. So it's got... They clearly were going... They thought we must go to the some Doctor Who people to get the sort of authentic feel of TV science fiction. But there were an awful lot of kids TV programs made by Thames Television round about this time that look and feel like this. That they have virtually no money spent on them, uh, probably not much rehearsal time, and they they go in the studio. There's not much time. There's no time for retakes. Uh, they go out and they film stuff on 16 millimeter cameras, but it's just like you know they say go and get on with it and they just film it from a distance like you know there's a shot of an ambulance rushing um rushing Stephen, the new tomorrow person who's breaking out to hospital and they basically cover it in one very long shot and it whooshes past and then the camera stays with it and we're treated to a very long wide shot of (laughs) an ambulance in the distance turning into a a building which is purportedly um a uh, hospital which it clearly isn't because there's a very wobbly sign just pinned outside saying Claire, Claremont General. <laughs> I've got a really uh, so true. A thing that a really pernickety thing to say about it. When Ginge, that's the name of the guy on the uh, course motorbike, although he's not named in this episode. Uh, when Ginge is on the motorbike and he reports to Jedekiah on the Natty CSO or Chroma Key video screen on his bike's dashboard, and he says, he says they've just gone into the Claremont General Hospital. Repeat the Claremont General Hospital so when he says repeat he pronounces it oh, a different name what you know, it's a bit like saying my name is Nick N-I-C-K repeat N-A-C-K and, you know <laughs> kind of not getting it right this I don't know whether the actor was having a laugh very very experienced actor whose name escapes me but just been in everything in those days he's, yeah I was going to say he's a real like a regular in in that sort of henchman-y sort of role I seem to recall as well he does a lot of things like that um, well, they liked him so much that they brought him back as a good character. The same character kind of realised the uh, error of his ways later. So, I mean, it slightly pains me to hear you slagging it off so much. But for someone who wasn't there at the time, I completely understand you having this point of view. Well, the, th- the and, thing and is... You're, you're right. It is... It just does not stack up and stand up, does it? It, it looks like a terrible amateur mess. And it's such a shame because I watched it when I was a kid and really rather enjoyed it. 
the thing is for me and and i love you know i love old telly and i really do and i've got the box set of tomorrow people because um you know i i've been told by several people you know they used to watch it and and i really wanted to get into it and this is now i think my third or fourth attempt at trying to get into uh the tomorrow people um so every time i just can't i just can't I, you know, and I, I didn't just watch the first episode this time around. I went on to the second episode. I stuck with it because I want. I just. I really want to enjoy it, um, but I just find it. I just, it just doesn't float my boat, unfortunately. Um, and I, I think if I was a, a kid, I think it was the best thing ever. I would have thought it was incredible because it has got you know motorbikes and villains and fun music and and cool special effects. I mean. By they're not they're not any good the special effects they're not any good but they're cool if that makes sense like lots of fun every time someone and... jaunts they mess it up because if there's anyone else in the shot they sort of move slightly as the person disappeared jaunting is their um uh, like teleporting, teleporting thing yeah. They do, yeah they later on get rid of that awful glittery effect and they just sort of fade away like a you know just a cross fade which is probably a lot easier for them to have done i always get annoyed right. when they do the zoom in on the screens and and it just it's like it just zooms into the like You've it got doesn't to explain this to the listeners because that it's makes no sense whatsoever what you're saying <laughs> okay so basically um yeah how can i explain this in a way that's so when they zoom into something if you're zooming into a normal screen so say you've got a television as you zoom in the image on on the screen that you're zooming into um will be zoomed in with the camera zooming in but what this does because it's cso or chroma key or green screen or blue screen or whatever term you're familiar with when it zooms in the image on the screen stays to scale so all you're getting is is, is the screen is getting very big but the image that, that it's yeah. that is on there but they're looking at a map aren't they that's in the foreground and and tim the computer with the funny voice who says with yes john all the time um it's always he just he's, like he's, he's drawing... shut in a cupboard <laughs> yes with a ring modulator badly tuned <laughs> um he, he sort of is drawing little images on this screen to show them little circles i think and see, lines. i liked that actually i thought that but was then cool. when the camera moves in past them the light they they don't fade the lines out quickly enough so they're just left yeah. <laughs> well it's really weird isn't it it's, so, it's such a profoundly annoying thing and it's almost impossible to explain without visuals <laughs> I it think is we've used the word zoom about 15 times it's, it's a tr it's a tricky one to describe and like there's a scene in it i don't know if you've got this far nick but um where i saw um, to the end of the episode i've seen the whole thing i've seen several years worth of it uh as a kid i did stop watching at some point because i sort of grew out of it go on what are you going to say well there's a bit where they practice telekinesis on a cup and the yes. cups moving around but the yes. way that they did the green screen on that is you can see quite clearly i'm showing nick as a, you can yeah. see where the person's hand is because covering it the handle so it looks handle, like they're doing yeah. telekinesis on this broken cup uh, and they don't even think to put a rod at the bottom of it so they can hold it remotely you know without any part of them obscuring the yeah uh, you know, I, I think it, I think it is just a case of it's it's look at us, we can do this. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. Because it, if it's not slick, because Doctor Who was quite a slick operation. I mean, yeah. in, in comparison, <laughs> obviously they it's, had the uh, advantage of many years of using this technology. Yes, but. <laughs> I'm, I'm reminded of a phrase that Tom Baker used when he was interviewed during uh, the making or for the publicity for The Face of Evil. And he said, you know, the BBC have developed great expertise in this programme. And I think that sums it up. The BBC, you know, a lot of early Doctor Who is pretty rough and ready, but they did develop an expertise of making science fiction in that multi-camera way that kind of sort of stands the test of time better than this. There wasn't enough of a skills base at thames television to make this kind of television that quickly that that's Definitely. the bottom line the other big problem with the tomorrow people which persists until its very last episode is the casting um there are so many terrible performances in the tomorrow people in this episode the only good actor is nicholas young who yes. plays john and he stays with the entire series he has a way of playing that character which is you know this slightly patronizing teenager uh, and um uh, and nicholas is a very wry and funny person himself uh, 
I'll, I'll just I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, but he survives all the way through, and we're we're joined later, and I think for the second or maybe third series by the character of Elizabeth, who was absolutely brilliant as well. She gives a great performance. Um, but here we have Carol, <laughs> who I know you hate her, but she. The thing is, she is making a performance choice, and she is. Uh, she is doing a kids TV series perform so she is talking like a really helpful um, nursery school teacher and everything is very very I mean it's realistic but it's just blum and irritating I, isn't I it? found her very she's very sweet like yes. she, she, she seems like a very sweet and nice person um, I mean I can't I can't imagine she went went down to see went down to see her friends afterwards and spoke like that well, if, um, if she did uh, she wouldn't have many friends uh, so she has decided that her character is like that i think yeah i think it's yeah i think you're absolutely bang on the money with that one there but i think also you know surely it's a responsibility of of people working on it to be able to say you know you can play this a bit more because it's quite it even well, though I don't think they're good enough actors that's that's the problem it's an awful thing to say isn't it uh steven's pretty good the character of steven steven's good steven um, Stephen is uh, da, 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 Peter Vaughan Clark. Peter who, Vaughan Clark, who yeah. I spoke to um, Elliot Chapman this morning, actually um, about. Well, he tweeted me about it, and um, Peter Vaughan Clark is now working. Uh, he works doing lighting on Mousetrap, actually. Oh, right, so Elliot yeah. sees him every day in that. So it's well, Pete, interesting. I met I met Peter when he came in to do Big Finish um, tomorrow, people, and he had a sort of a real sense of humour about it because he'd stopped acting years. And years before, I think he didn't do anything after the Tomorrow People. You know, he just did that. And so he, you know, he came back to it, but he wasn't an actor. And he, I don't think he ever intended to be a, a great actor. But he certainly does a, a, a pretty competent job. <laughs> That's not much of a review, is it? Pretty competent job in this. And the series, of course, took him through puberty. So we see all the uh, development of his voice going through. So in this, he has a very squeaky little voice. And the next series, he had that kind of in-betweeny voice that the boys get where their voice is getting a little bit husky. No, 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 and, then, no, 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 and then he went very deep, you know, for the third of four series yeah um but yeah that's for me the problem with the tomorrow people uh, that i think you know fairly mediocre acting almost totally across the board with notable exceptions let's put it that way and also sort of very very unimaginatively directed and rushed uh, a lack of expertise but hey you know it had such a blisteringly brilliant central concept it kept it going how many years until 1979 when, when it, you know it had it yeah. did have legs and and it, and it is you know i mean it's it's very easy i think for me to sit here and say you know blah 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 blah, blah this is rubbish this is rubbish. But at the same time um every like everybody who i've spoken to I, i've not actually heard from somebody who said oh that was a dreadful program in the 70s everyone loves everybody it. thought it was brilliant and i can totally understand that and i and i can actually really agree and, and think to myself well i think if i You're, was a kid then i would have loved it i you know yeah. i definitely would have loved it um, those of us of that generation all have fond memories of it but yeah it's a cool concept if you don't, if you don't have that then it's but uh, it's virtually unwatchable isn't it because it's so tatty <laughs> well old carol i'm just looking at her actress uh sammy windmill um who she didn't do, carry on acting at all really she did tomorrow people was sort of a mid-run in her career she's st she started acting in 1970 and stopped acting in 1978 her last role was in uh, the professionals uh, oh. she was in the new avengers as well but she now works she is a uh, she works in casting now oh well she'll never give me a job <laughs> <laughs> but yeah there we, there we I go i don't think anyone was working in casting during the tomorrow people no <laughs> quite it just oh she, they'll do yeah she, she's actually how does that happen she's managed to get one of her people that she's casting is is a wrestler that's rather interesting um who knew um for world of sport on telly at the moment sorry just chatting my mind is now. world of sport on again yeah they've revived world of sport do they have the same theme tune? Um, no, not at all. It's 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 now it's now a rebranded American style wrestling show for ITV, which is sort of as somebody who enjoys wrestling, it's all right. Like it's good because it's British wrestling, but um, it's just there's just something about it that I'm not that keen on. It's all it just can't take it seriously in the same way, and I don't know why. 
but um, love a bit of British wrestling. So how many exclamation marks are you going to give the Tomorrow People, the slaves of Jedekiah? You don't, I mean, we don't in this episode get to see who is the villain, Jedekiah, played by... Uh, he is played by and has a tremendous face. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. like he looks like if you were to say to a kid, "What does a villain look like?" <laughs> he looks like that. Um, Jedekiah is played by Francis De Wolf. That's it. Yes, who has done lots of things. He was um, in Doctor Who. I think he was in the Keys of Marinus. He was. Yes, I, I think so. If yes, my no, memory is definitely was. Yeah. He's been in a lot of. He again. Um, I don't know if he... No, he, so he, he was obviously... Movie star. He His last acting job uh, um, that IMDb says is 1977. So Jedekiah was his second to last job. Wow. Um, if if he stopped Well, he was there. quite old then. He, was, he probably died. <laughs> but it's good that he could have some fun, because it is a fun character that he's playing. You know, it's... Yes. It's... Uh, I love that. The, the, he, st- he stars in The Slays of Jedekiah, and then a few years later... Um, was in the Revenge of Jedekiah farewell yeah. performance, which is what the episode yeah. was called. Apparently, but yeah, he's been in quite a few things. Uh, lots of uh, lots of old horror sort of films by yeah. the looks of it. Yeah. Christmas yeah. Carol, yeah. Moby Dick, The Hound of the Baskervilles. Yeah, uh, from Russia with Love. What's uh, he playing from Russia with Love? Uh, says here Vavra. Oh, from <laughs> Russia, Siege of the Saxons. He played the blacksmith. Um, no idea what that I'm, was about, but I'm, it sounds I'm glad good. you wanted to mention that. I thought you were going to tell us something. Siege of the Blacksmiths. He played, Siege of the Blacksmiths. Siege <laughs> of the Saxons. He played the blacksmith. If, <laughs> if the character doesn't have a name, it's not it's not worth reporting. He was, he, he was in Miss Robin Hood playing accident policeman. <laughs> does, does that mean a policeman that assists accidents or just this accident <laughs> prone? <laughs> All right, whoops, sorry, car. sorry. <laughs> I've dropped my helmet again. Is there a uh, a murder? Oh God! I've just stepped on the corpse. Um, oh God! I've just. <laughs> oh dear. What? Um, how many exclamation marks? Did okay, you say? I'm going to give it a three because um, three. that's very generous considering how much you hated well, it. Yeah, I think three's fair. I, it's a love hate thing with me, you know. I, I I desperately want to like it, and I desperately um, acknowledge the reasons as to why I should like it. Um, but it just doesn't fit with me, which is you know. So it's a three. I'll give it a four for the concept, but it's a three because of what it is. It would be a two if I had to judge it on just that, if that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I think if I were watching it for the first time, I'd give it one exclamation mark. But yeah, I'll give it three. I could do a whole other podcast telling you about my adventures in doing the commentaries. I was the moderator on the commentaries <laughs> of the DVD box sets, but honestly, that's just too... It's got, it, if you've got the DVD box sets, do listen to the commentaries because they are outrageous and, and Nicholas Young is particularly um, entertaining, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say no more. Listen, competition result, cutting edge, my life in film and television. Marvellous. The autobiography of director and editor Eric Myval. Eric was a music editor on The Prisoner. Yeah, became a lifelong friend of Patrick McGowan. Um, it's published by Coit Media, coitmedia.co.uk. And the question was, Eric Myval was the man responsible for a Beatles song appearing in the final Prisoner episode, Fallout. Which Beatles song was it? And the winner says, Hi, Benji and Nick. The answer to your Prisoner question is a song very close to my heart, as it was our wedding song. I am not Aww. married to you. Why, why are you saying it was our wedding song? The answer is, All You Need Is Love. Keep up the good work, Lance. And that's Lance Harrington from Colchester, Essex. Well, the Unmutual and Rick Davey have been informed of you, Lance, and um, you'll be getting your, your prize soon. Uh, the new competition, the prize... The Doctor Who novel, The Dalek Generation by Nicholas Brogues. Oh, Nicholas cool. It's. I'll sign it if, if you like. Personalise it if you want. Let us know in your answers. The question, in my first TV Dalek episode, where did Rose Tyler touch the Dalek? Mm. The subject line, elevate! Exclamation mark. The closing date, the 28th of September 2018, as has been mentioned in another podcast, the day before my birthday. Good luck! Look at that. What a competition and a half there. <laughs> So get them in and get those emails in and get chatting with us. We love to hear from you. Um, decide next week's topic, it says here. OK, well, I've, I've had an idea. It's been a while Ooh. since we did a Doctor Who, and I, and I feel like we should be true to our, our love of the programme by doing a Doctor Who. Mm. And so what I've done is I found a website entitled therandomizer.net. 
Oh. Okay. And what this does is this picks a Doctor Who story at random. Oh. <gasps> So, what this means is that we go in blind, and whatever I click this button... Okay. Um, unless it obviously says, I don't know, something that's compl- just doesn't exist. Um, yes. So, are we going to commit to it? You but do not exist! Not <laughs> exist! Not exist! exist. Okay. I once, I once yes, had let's a, commit to it. I once as had a party at my house, and we, um, we put delay on the microphone after a few drinks, <laughs> and we all spent a good amount of time just doing that. Uh, and from thoroughly, death to the Daleks, thoroughly yeah. enjoying ourselves. Okay, the only cap I'm saying is it has to be classic series, uh, and we will say that that I, I will say that that goes up to. Um, we'll, we will say the TV. Survival. With, we'll, oh, right, the TV. We'll, movie, we'll yeah, include okay. the TV movie, but anything after that, I think, would not be true to our cult TV thing. Okay. Fair yeah. Enough. Okay. So I'm going to click the button. It's state of decay. Oh God! Yeah, state. Uh, well, we've we've committed. We've committed to state of decay. Uh, just should we just do episode one? Yep. Yeah. That's and Nick's, any more that we fancy? <laughs> Nick's just there, like, yep, yep. <sighs> okay. I oh, see. Stand data state of decay. See, I like it. I really oh, like it. So for me, it's all right because I I love that whole season. Um, I love the darkness of it all. But yeah, that's a fun one. Okay, let's do it. Doctor <laughs> Who's state of decay. He's just scratching his head in this sort of... Uh, uh, it's half an hour of my life I'll never get back. Um, starring Tom <laughs> Baker, Matthew Waterhouse and Lala Ward. Um, and some people who think they're vampires. Right. Uh, <laughs> and a really bad model shot. Uh, that's it, isn't it? That Time is it, talk. yes. Uh, Close to the microphone. Here we go, nice and... Uh, Nice and snug in here against the microphone. Well, Nick, it has been uh, what can only be described uh, as a roller coaster ride. Cheerio. Here we are. Yes, well, cheerio. Thank you for listening. And don't forget to rate, review, and subscribe. Pressing stop now. Kachunk.